All praises to Yahweh Bashami Hawa Shai, Bashama Ka Kwadash. Double honest to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And shall I warm to the elect to the nation of Israel. This is gonna be a lesson which I'm gonna entitle I've wrote down a title of um Esau, the man who thought that he could become the most high. And what the lesson's gonna be pretty much be about is that Esau thinks that he can become like Yahweh man. And I'm gonna to go to the first first scripture of this lesson which is second peter second peter chapter three let me find that second peter chapter three and verse three <clears throat> it says knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fa fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation, for this they are willingly ignorant of that by the word that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the waters and in the water whereby the world that was that then was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and the but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men and that's ultimately talking about Esau now that's not actually the scripture that I wanted to read man the scripture that I wanted to read was something different to that but that scripture still still is in part of the lesson but that's in technique that wasn't actually the scripture that I wanted to start the lesson with but those ungodly men that he's talking about is Esau man because ultimately his destruction is going to be the flames, which let me go back to that in fact. Verse 7, But the heaven of heavens which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And part of those ungodly men that are going to receive that flame is Esau. Yet the elites of Esau are not going to be destroyed by these things because they're going to be the first batch of slaves and they're going to be hiding in, in the rocks, man. They're going to be hiding in, in underground bunkers, in space stations to try and escape these things and they will escape it but then they're gonna end up getting still a judgment anyway they'll escape that part of the judgment but they're not gonna escape judgment in, in general and they're gonna damn near wish that they that they was part of those flames when they see what's gonna happen to them anyway man some people say oh they don't want no old crusty edomite building up the kingdom from it for them the reason why these old edomites that might be weak in the body are going to be getting punished isn't because we're trying to find the strongest slaves going when we're when we're going to be having them in slavery it's because they need to get punished for the wickedness that they've done they need to get punished the strong edomite is going to get punished too the edomite that does weights or whatever they're going to get it too but these the edomites that have never did a hard day's work in their life right and have had a damn diamond encrusted spoon in their mouth from the moment they was born they're going to get served up too man this is second thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1 now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our lord yahweh shah marshal yak and by our gathering together unto him that you be that you be not so soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as the day of Yahweh is at hand, it's so like as the day of Amashiach is at hand, let no man be deceived by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the son of perdition, and we did fall, right, during this time, after this time, we did fall in 70 AD, and we got scattered, we scattered into Africa, and then we also went and went to other places after that too, right, and the man of sin has is been revealed right now, and it's Esau, the so-called white man, the Caucasian, right? The Edomites of the Bible. That's who they are. Also known as the Idumeans. Also referred to as the wicked in the scriptures. But in the modern terms, what they call themselves is American, English, Swedish, Russian, German, British. You know, these are all the different names that they try and put on themselves. To try and escape from being called what they actually are. Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. 
or that is worshipped, so that he sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is that he is the Most High. So he's trying to think that he's the Most High, man. And that's what this lesson's about. It's about these Edomites thinking that they're God, right? The title of the lesson is going to be Esau, the man that thought he could become the Most High, and that's what these Edomites think, man. And the first thing that they that they did is rage against the chosen of the, of the Yahweh, because they know really that we're going to become more like the Most High than anybody else on the earth. And let me quickly, let me quickly go into some scriptures on that. In fact, this is Psalm chapter two. And verse 1, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? What's the vain thing? It goes into it. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, let us cut their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. So not only are they going against Yahweh, they're going against his anointed. And who's the anointed? The Israelites. So Esau's main enemy, on, on main enemy is Yahweh, who's in the heavens. And then it's us, the Israelites, who are on earth. And Esau is really planning one day to try and actually fight Yahweh Shai, man. Like this, this, this nation of people are insane. Verse 5. In fact, verse 4. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. Yahweh shall have them in derision because Yahweh ultimately knows that they're not going to be able to do any of these things. He's just watching them do it and finding it amusing, man. Like picture you in your garden, you had an anthill, right? And you saw all the ants rising up, building weapons in their anthill, right? Right, making weapons, saying we're gonna go into this house one day, and we're gonna overcome him, right? You might just you might see that it ha it's happening and just look at it and laugh because it ain't no threat, right? You might just let it build up as, to the to the point where they they can build up to the highest possible point that an ant can go, right? Just like how Esau's got a high a limit that he can go to. And you're always going to let him go to a certain point that's only available to somebody like him, to somebody like Esau, right? And then when it comes to that point, he went, once his hurtful works are fulfilled, you're always going to show him that even at his best, he still don't make, he's still not a match, right? Even at the top of Esau's, at Esau's best, he still cannot compete with Yahweh. Verse 5, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. So once he's let Esau build up, once the vessel of wrath fitted to destruction, is did all the things that he was supposed to do, he's going to be destroyed. Verse 6, yeah, yeah, I have set my king upon the holy mountain, the holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree that Yahweh have said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. So that's what, what's going to belong to us. Esau is still going to lose, right? And and just as that for that scripture as well, People try and make out like talking about slavery is a bad thing. And like us saying that people are going into slavery is a bad thing. Yet the scriptures say, ask of me and I will give thee the heathen for thy inheritance. Meaning that we're going to be given them as a possession, as slaves. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, all ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve Yahweh with fear and, re and rejoice with trembling. And that's talking about us. We're the kings of the earth. We're the judges of the earth. But Esau has covered the faces of the judges thereof right now to where most people don't really know who's supposed to be ruling. Most people think that Esau is supposed to be ruling and thinks that if it was even possible for Esau to fall down, that the Chinese who are the Moabites would be next. Verse 12. Kiss the sun, lest ye be angry, and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, but a little blessed are they that put his trust in them. Trust in him. And that's going to be the Israelites that's is going to put their trust in Yahweh. No other nation. And, it, and really, it's going to be the elect that are going to put their trust in him. This is Job chapter 9 and verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So Esau... He's a heathen that's raging, right? And he's covering up the faces of the judges thereof. He's trying to make every single image that can even be considered as anything godly. He's trying to make it be himself. And he, he tries to impose himself above all that is called God, right? He thinks, well, if, if whenever he sees anybody that says that they believe in a certain God, right? He'll just come in with the sword 
and see if that if those people can overcome what he believes, man. They'll they'll see if they can if their gods can overcome Esau's sword. And for the most part, most of the time, it doesn't. Because Esau's coming at coming at people that believe in a false god all the time. And when it's worked against us, that's been because we're sinning. But when you read in the scriptures any time where we wasn't sinning and Esau tried to rise up against us, he always got given that work, man. He always got messed up every single time he tried to come after us whenever he was keeping the Lord. Every single time. And when he comes in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh is going to lift up a standard against him. Right now, let me just read this scripture. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 11. Let our strength be the law of justice, for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. So Esau is trusting in what he's got. Esau trusts in the sword and trusts in, the wick in his wickedness and trusts in his witchcraft. Right, because Yahweh gave him knowledge on this earth to be able to do certain things, right? But ultimately, that knowledge is the knowledge of the left hand side, and it's not it's not real wisdom; it's fake wisdom. Esau has been given fake fake knowledge and fake wisdom, man. This is Sirach chapter nineteen and verse twenty two. The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom; neither at any time the counsel of sin is prudent. So all of these behind the scenes witchcraft that these devils do and all of the stuff that they're planning to do against the Israelites by where they try and make us be considered the worst people on earth so that people hate us they come up with all these proverbs and bywords all these um names names that they give us so that we can be given other titles and other names outside of what we really are which is Israelites that's not that's not real knowledge and all the demons that they worship all the all the spells that they do all the religions that they've got all the bogged out philosophies that they've got, right? Is really not wisdom because at the end of it all, they're still going to be on slave ships traveling to Israel. Still. At the end of it all, they're still going to have scepters hitting them in the head. At the end of it all, they're still going to be dashed to pieces with a rod of iron and broken like a vessel. So... At the end of at the end of the day, all of this stuff that they're doing is just so that Yahweh can have a good laugh at them, man. This is Psalms chapter sixty four and verse two. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, because all of this stuff that they're doing is demonic as hell, man. Right? And if it's not for Yahweh, we'd be overcome by the evil that these devils do. If it wasn't for Yahweh, verse three, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect, suddenly they do shoot at him and fear not, so they all they're always against us, man. Verse 5. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. So lucky in one second. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, Who shall see them? So they don't think that they're being watched for all this stuff that they do. Verse 6. They search out iniquities, they accomplish a diligent search. Both their inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. So they're searching out. They search out a whole bunch of left hand wicked energy, man. Like people think that people really think that these people wearing suits and ties are not into some not into some um, don't believe in gods and spiritual things. They've tricked people into thinking that they don't believe into these types of things, but they do. That's why when you look into the music industry, that's when you look into the movie industry, you're always seeing these people have got all of these different occultic symbols that they know the meanings of. And I learned these two terms within the last two weeks or last three weeks or what, four weeks, whatever, right? And they've got there's two different terms. There's exoteric, right? Exoteric, which is a symbol that everyone kind of not would be something that everyone kind of knows and has a certain understanding of what it's supposed to be. And then there'd be, there, there's esoteric, which is hidden. So what Esau's done with his occult, with his occult, occult, with his occult um community, which occult is like secret, means secret. What they've done is they've um made occultic symbols, and they've gave these occultic symbols an exoteric meaning. So something that we, as the general public, look at these symbols and be like, oh, that's just this, oh, that's just this company's logo, oh, that's just that company's logo, right? But when they see it, it's got an esoteric meaning, which is a secret thing that they have 
that they know what it's really about. So that when they are, when they then can get away with doing that, they can put these different symbols in TV shows, in children's shows, put these different symbols in music videos and have hidden meanings in movies, hidden meanings in songs that they don't that they know what it's re- the song's really about, right? Or they know what the music video is really about. But we are thinking that the music video is just some snazzy new designs. Oh, he's got that, he's got that blue and white checkerboard on the back of his on the in that movie because he likes playing chess. No, that's not what it is to do with. It's something else. Oh, he's got that. Oh, he's throwing his putting his hands in that position because that's just a rock and roll thing. That's just what rock and roll people do, that is. No, it's not. It's something else. But they've got esoteric, meaning again, secretive meanings for things. But then they've made these esoteric things have an exoteric, meaning a thing that the general public thinks, oh, that's just that's just that. And in that way, they can hide in plain sight evil thing, evil intentions that they have, man, which is what the scriptures say. Verse six again. In fact, verse five, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search, both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. Like they've got, they've, there's a lot, man. There's a lot that these Edomites do and they ultimately think that this stuff's going to cause them to be able to be like Yahweh. But it's not though, right? They've got all these different philosophies that they have, right? They, they've transgressed by wine. They've made all these other nations of the earth believe their ways. But it's never, it's not going to work anyway. And Esau is going to be destroyed for trying to do this. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Yea, also he, and any, everyone knows, if, if you think that that scripture isn't talking about the so-called white man, then I can't, I don't know what to say to you. If you think that there's somebody else, that soul is lifted up and he's not right in him more than a so-called Caucasian man, right? Or so-called Caucasian woman, because they're the devil too. We can't say that they're not the devil just because you might might slip on one every now and again. That don't mean that they're not the devil. They're still the devil too. And they'll be the devil in the kingdom when they're concubines. <laughs> they're, they're still gonna be they're still gonna be the devil. Let's be real, man. They're still gonna be the devil then too. And he, someone might get get stressed out about that now. He's still gonna be the devil, man. It's just gonna be a devil that you that a devil a, a, a evil wicked woman that is in captivity and is a concubine at that time. Now that's a whole, that's a whole another topic, but that's part of the belief. That's part of the doctrine too, man. That's it's all it's all part of it. Habakkuk chapter two and verse four: Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home who exalteth his, his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gareth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. So they, they, these Edomites are very sneaky, man, right? Because they try and say to people, oh, what are you doing? What are you always, what are you doing over in this country, right? But at the same time, they're the ones always going over to other people's countries, destroying the country and forcing the other, con- the other the, all the p- people of that country to have to flee from where they live to go to where it's safe. They're always doing that. They always say, oh, go back to this country if you're not happy with it. Wouldn't If I was to go back over there right now to whatever country that whatever country we're from, whatever country anyone on the earth is from, whenever an Edomite says this, I guarantee if they go back to their country that they're from, they're going to see some Edomites over there in camouflage with guns. So what are, they, what are you doing over there then? If you're really about not going over to people's countries. And especially over here in the UK, man. The, these people over here in the UK, these Edomites in the UK, are some of the proudest demons ever, man. I remember like maybe like 10 plus years ago now, when I was on a holiday one time in, a, in, in the next country, and I overheard an Edomite woman saying that she had a she went on a holiday to India or Pakistan or somewhere like that. And she was complaining, saying that they wasn't serving nothing but curry. Well, that's their that's their national dish, dummy. So of course they're going to be serving that. Of course they're going to serve the food that's part of their culture, in their country. 
but he so wants to be able to make his ways of the world be everywhere that every, anyone can possibly go, man. He doesn't even want no country to have their own type of recipe for making something. He's just a demon, man. And that's why, you know what? I was going to save this scripture for the nearer to the end of the lesson, but let me read it now. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 18. And, jo and Jacob shall be a fire. Let me read that again, excuse me. And the house of Jake shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For Yahweh has spoken it. And Esau ultimately has to get destroyed because he thinks that he can try and tell Yahweh that he made things wrong. Here it is. Yahweh, let me, let me get this. Let me get this. Right, let's go to the book of Genesis. This is Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11. Let me highlight this. So lucky, I apologize. Let me highlight this. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. So what that's saying is that Yahweh made fruits have seeds right but then Esau comes along and says nah I want it seedless right Esau comes along and says nah it's, it's better with seeds I don't I, I almost choke to death on the seed no you don't if you eat grapes with seeds in there you ain't gonna choke to death on the seed you're just gonna eat the seed swallow it it's gonna go through your digestive system and it's gonna come back out but Esau tries to make out like you'll pass away if you eat a food with a seed in there but really he just doesn't want Nobody to be able to re remake any foods and wants to have control over the process of growing food on the earth, man. So that everybody has to come to him for the want of all things. This is Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 9. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Let the pot shed strive with the pot sheds, sheds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou or thy work? He hath no hands, and that's what Esau does. He says, oh, there's kind of a bit of, um, there's, there, these things could be enhanced a bit. So Esau will say a human and say, oh, it wasn't made the right gender. Or Esau will see a human and say, oh, if I put a computer chip in it, right, in its head, right, I could make it play Tetris with, that, with, with no hands, right? That's what Esau says. Or if I put a computer chip in, 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 in his wrist, right, he can scan, he can scan his, he can scan his Oyster card without, without having to go into his wallet and take out his card. Isn't that convenient? That's what Esau will say. Oh, I can make him have mag magnetic powers like Magneto from X-Men. No, you can't. You can't do it. Oh, I can put a chip in his head and make him be able to walk. But then when you look at the gate of that walk, it's all over the place, man. It would take the guy, the guy about two days to walk to the corner shop and back with that speed. Esau ain't got it like that, but he wants to have it like that. And that's why he's doing all of these things because he wants to have the power of God. Verse 10. Warn to him that saith unto his father, what begettest thou? Or to the mother, or to the mother, what hast thou brought forth? And that's what Esau is pretty much doing. He's, he's saying to his creator, man, you didn't make me right. And let me get another scripture on that. Because the scriptures say, shall a thing formed, say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Romans chapter 9 and verse 19. Thou wast say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault for who have resisted his will? Neighbor, old man, who art thou who replies against Yahweh? Shall a thing formed, say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me? Why hast thou made me dust? And that's what Esau's trying to say. Why have you made me this way? Esau thinks he's going to be able to try and change the way, change the general structure that he was made. And that's why they make all these false doctrines of evolution and all of this stuff, right? And actually, they're, they're adding at the end of their evolution chart now, the evolution diagram that they made. They're trying to add like a whole robot type thing on, the, on that. They're trying to make a robot type transhumanism type thing at the end of that I've seen on certain images I've seen it on certain images and I'm like you can look it up for yourself 
to see if it, see if I'm telling the truth. But there's certain images where at the end of that evolution thing where it goes from like a caveman, like from a monkey to a caveman to a guy in a suit, which that's pretty much showing Esau. Because that's what Dave was like in the caves, man. And to see, a, to see an example of Esau's true state, you can look up on the internet, this family called the Whitakers, right? And a lot of the family, a lot of the men of that family don't even say any words. They like grunt and bark like dogs. And the first person that made me re made me see this was Apostle Taha when he did a when he put up a video a while back going into going into that. And the, the channel that you can find this on is called the um soft the soft white underbelly or something like that. But if you type in the Whitaker family on the internet, you'll see you'll see what I'm talking about. And it's by a YouTube channel called the Soft White Underbelly. Back to this verse twenty one. Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honour and another unto dishonour? What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured in much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that's Esau. He's letting Esau think that he's going to be able to transcend above what, what things Yahweh has made, right? But ultimately, he's not going to be able to overcome the things that Yahweh has put in, inside the structure of, of the human being. He's not going to be able to overcome these things. He's still on. He's still a creation himself that's under control of Yahweh. So he's thinking that he's doing all of these things independent of Yahweh. But he's doing those things because of Yahweh. Because Yahweh's got a certain thing that he wants him to fulfill so that when he destroys him, nobody ever tries to do what Esau did ever again. Everyone's going to be terrified to see, what hap to, to see what's going to happen to these Edomites. For, by, for trying to think that they can compete with God and be Yahweh and be like the Most High. Isaiah to the 14 and verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will sit. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit, so they're not going to be able to do it. Verse 16, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Because with the, the, elite, the, the elite nations of this world, right, the, the highest level Edomite families of this world, if these other Edomite families was to catch them one day, right, on a carnal way, hand-to-hand -hand combat type thing, right, if these just normal, everyday, raggedy Edomites that you see, right? They'd beat these Edomites up, man. These average Edomites would beat these elite level Edomites up if we're talking about a carnal, hand-to-hand -hand combat type way. Or even if we're talking about the way of them using their own blessing. But because, because these elite families have been given the power of all these witchcraft and all of this left-hand energy, that's what's transcended them. And because they've been given certain wisdom, that's what's made them be above or the other Edomite nations, because they've been given certain access to certain demonic knowledge, which is really not, not going to get them nowhere anyway, ultimately. And let me get this. Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 3. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. So Esau's got access. Esau's got access to a lot, a lot of things, man, to where he can get away with certain things, man. He knows certain different witchcraft that he can do certain different hand signals and all of this bs and he can he's there's certain things that he's able to achieve with this man he's able to get certain control over people that are not of the elect and through that he's been able to get riches which he's going to go into right now verse four we've died wisdom and died with thy knowledge so lucky we've died wisdom and we've died understanding that was gotten the riches and has gotten gold and silver into thy treasures by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic, traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. So because Esau has got money from these things, he's like, well, it obviously works then. And through the money, he's able to get power. So he's able to get power through the wisdom, right? He's able to get control over people's ignorance because he knows certain things, right? And then that's able to, made him be able to get riches. And then that's what's made his heart be proud even more. Because he's got riches from it. So then he can further 
indulge in these things and further try and learn more and more left hand energy to try and make him think that he's the most high. Verse 6. Therefore, does say if you howl, because thou hast said in thy heart, because that's Salakia, let me read that again. Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 6. Therefore, does say if the Lord Yahweh, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw, draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou say yet, wilt thou say yet before him that slayeth thee, I am a God, but thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. And there's many people that are coming to slay Esau, man. The Persians are coming. The Ishmaelites are coming. Right? And then after all of that, Yahweh Shai is coming to get them. Who is this that cometh from Edom? We dyed garments from Basra, the Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. Esau is going to ultimately see Yahweh Shai. That's the main person he needs to worry about. That's the main one. Now let me um select it. Let me let me end the lesson on this scripture here. Isaiah forty seven. Because Esau really does think that he's Yahweh man, but he's gonna be setting snares. This is Isaiah chapter forty seven and verse ten. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said none seeth me, thy wisdom and thy knowledge have perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with, stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries wherein thou hast laboured from thy youth. If so be, thou mayest be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. Because from the earliest chance Esau's had, He's been on demons, man. They've been on that. They've been on trying to, f during the time of the Greeks, they've been on that kind of stuff. Before that, they've been on that. They've always been on, on, on that devil stuff, man. They've always been going off. They've always gave the wrong sacrifice when there was, when, during the, when, when it was Cain. They always gave the wrong, you know? They've never wanted to do the right thing. The scriptures even say, let favour be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. So even when they were pretending to be the Israelites, they still didn't do the right thing then, even though the world was was actually agreeing, saying, okay, you, you are the people. Even though the world right now is saying, yeah, okay, you are the people. We believe that you are. They're still not doing it. They've got the chance. They've got the chance to do it even now, and they still won't do it because they can't do it. Verse 11, Therefore shall evil come upon thee, thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee, thou shalt not be able to pull it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know, because their wickedness has made them think that nothing's going to happen to them. They think, oh, this stuff's hidden, it's all esoteric, or all, all, our, all our occult, meaning secretive stuff that we do. No one knows about this, nobody's aware of this stuff that we're doing. No one knows when we're making these musicians do these music videos and he's wearing that stupid dress and he's got his hands in them stupid symbols. No, nobody knows what, what we're up to with that. But Esau's revealing it, to, uh, really revealing his own stuff that his own nation's doing because they ain't brought him in. So therefore now we can know about what Esau's up to. So we know we're, we're now starting to catch on to what Esau's wickedness is and all of his secrets. As it said, their secrets was going to be exposed in the book of Obadiah, those that were confederate with him have exposed him pretty much. Um, verse 12. Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries wherein thou hast laboured from thy youth. If so be, thou mayest be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things which from these things that shall come upon thee because Yahweh ultimately set them in a snare man and made them get away with doing all these things right 
But they always thought that the reason why they was able to do these things was because, oh, we gave the right sacrifice to that to that demon. Oh, that left-hand God that we worship. Oh, would that, that, that particular ritual that we did, that's what made it work. But Yahweh just made them go through that earthly thing, which they thought was a, was a heavenly. He made them go through that because he wanted them to believe that that stuff works. But really, it was just Yahweh letting them get away with this stuff. But there's going to come a day where they do exactly the same rituals, exactly the same spells they drink exactly the same potions right and it's not going to work so that's going to be proof that it never really worked and ultimately it was Yahweh that made him do it so that he could destroy them and i'm gonna end the lesson there esau the man that thought he could become the most high he's going to be destroyed completely as a nation as it says in obadiah the first chapter and the 18th verse because he thought that he could fight and strive against his maker man he thought that he could become like Yahweh and he tried to do way too much and Yahweh is going to use him as an example and destroy him so that his name so that Yahweh's name can be declared for all the earth and cause for people to tremble in fear all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Bakar Kodash double understood the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalawam to the elected nation of Israel Shalawam